Welcome back to Learn Economia. Here in this video, I'll be discussing the Coase theorem, and this is one of the very important topics in the arena of public economics. Uh, so uh, let's deal with this topic. The Coase theorem is considered to be a legal and economic theory, which is developed by economist uh, Ronald Coase, and this theory is mainly with respect to uh, property rights. Uh, which states that where there are incomplete competitive markets with no transaction costs and efficient set of inputs and outputs, an optimal decision will be selected. So this is what the Coase theorem uh, actually says. Uh, and the theorem basically asserts that bargaining between individuals or groups related to property rights will lead to an optimal and efficient outcome uh, uh, no matter what that outcome is whether uh, it is in favor of one party or whether it is in favor of the other party it uh, it is important to note that this decision would be optimal or it will lead to efficient outcome now the course theorem which is developed by the economist ronald cops uh, course uh, it actually states that uh, when conflicting property rights occur bargaining between the parties involved will lead to an efficient outcome regardless of which party is ultimately awarded the property rights uh, so this will happen as long as the transaction costs associated with the bargaining are negligible. Also, the theorem states that if the tra if trade in an externality is possible and there are no transaction costs, then bargaining will lead to an efficient outcome regardless of the initial allocation of property rights. One of the tenets of this theorem is that bargaining must be costless. So this is something that is very much important to be noted and if there are costs associated with bargaining such as those related to the meetings or enforcement or something like that then it will affect the outcome. Neither party can possess market power relative to the other so that the bargaining uh, between the two parties can be equal enough, equal enough that it does not influence the outcome of the settlement. Uh, here the theorem shows that the, where, where property rights are concerned, involved parties do not necessarily consider how the property rights are divided up in these conditions. Uh, in these conditions apply and there are uh, and that they care only about the current and future income and rent or here income in the sense that the, the expected outcome. Uh, here this is uh, this is. Uh, they care, this is something that they care about and without regard to the issues uh, such as personal settlements or equity or other economic factors. The Coase theorem has been widely viewed as an argument against the legislative or regulatory intervention of conflicts over property rights or privately negotiated settlements. The theorem, uh, uh, it was developed as we have said it um, by Renal Coase and uh, it uh, he po the, uh, the proponent of this theory uh, he posited that the regulating frequencies are not required because the stations with the most to, to gain the, by broadcasting on a particular frequency had an incentive to pay other broadcasters uh, not to in interfere here broadcasters etc uh, means that um, the parties involved in this particular settlement. Now, uh, uh, so here I have given you a very vague idea about course here and what the theorem is all about and we have discussed uh, some uh, it's special uh, topics like, um, uh, like settlement, then bargaining, negotiation, property rights, etc. In this particular case here with this particular slide onwards, we will be trying to understand the cost theorem in a much more detailed manner. The cost theorem is actually applied when uh, there are conflicting property rights. This is something very much important to note. Uh, you consider that there are two parties and uh, here uh, we are not concerned about the pro whether the property rights is an, uh, allotted to the party one or party two. Okay, the cost theorem actually states that under ideal economic condition where, the, where, where there is a conflict of property rights, then the involved parties can bargain or negotiate in terms that uh, that will accurately reflect the full cost and the underlying value of the property rights uh, so that it will lead to the most efficient outcome and that will uh, create an improvement in the welfare of the economy. So uh, in order to happen, uh, in order to lead to this particular situation, the conditions conveniently assumed in the analysis of the efficient competitive market must be in place. So uh, it is very much important that for cost theorem to be applicable, the one important criteria to be 
the existence or the prevalence of the perfect competitive market in the economy and also the and there should be absence of any kind of transaction cost also we should be we should be uh, in, uh, we should take into account that the information must be free and symmetrical okay symmetric in the sense that both the parties if there are both, two parties involved in a tie of in a tug of war uh, the both uh, both the parties should have symmetric information that is a knowledge posed by one party should be posed by the other also now uh, if you look at an example uh, we, we will be able to understand cost theorem in a very very beautiful manner or very much in depth manner so let's consider the case of um, or let's consider the, an example then try to understand the theorem very uh, uh, very detailed in a very detailed manner okay now the cost theorem uh, it is considered to be applied to situation where the economic activities of one party impose some kind of cost of damage on to the other party so uh, we we have already said that uh, there involves some kind of bargaining and all so bargaining is something that occurs during the process and fund may either be offered to compensate one party for the other for the other party's activities or to pay the party whose activity inflicts the damage in order to stop that activity so here we take uh, here we take uh, a kind of example here uh, in this example uh, consider that there is a business party or a business going on in a particular place and as a result of this business uh, the business produces some kind of missions in the fact so in order to uh, carry forward this business th there are some uh, factories uh, in 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 a particular place and in those factories there are some missions okay and uh, so this is the main uh, 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 starting point of the problem you have to understand this problem this machine as a result of working of this machine there would be uh, noise in the economy so okay noise in the economy no, noise in, in the surrounding area okay so uh, what about the neighbor uh, neighbors residing in this particular area the, the neighbors residing in this particular factory would be uh, would be suffocating a lot as a result of this noise and they will complain about the noise and what is the way out here uh, the neighborhood households who can hear the loud noise of the machines being machines and the it's a main problem okay now the course uh, uh, as per the course theorem there are two kind of possibility to do away with the problem uh, either so we will discuss the two kinds of uh, uh, solutions first is that the business may choose to offer financial compensation to the affected parties in order to uh, uh, to in order to continue producing the noise or, or business and uh, so that they will they will be producing the uh, goods and services goods or service which is meant to be produced by making some noise okay that is um, here the neighbors has to tolerate the noise and uh, at the same time they will be compensating the neighbors for tolerating the noise now uh, and in the second case is that um, uh, so second case is that uh, the uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, here in the first case the business may uh, business may compensate the neighbors in the second case the neighbors may compensate the business so this is the, 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 the these are the two possibilities okay uh, that is the business may choose to offer uh, financial compensation to the affected parties in order to be allowed to continue producing the noise or the business might refrain from producing the noise uh, if the neighbors can be induced to pay the, to the business in order to compensate the business for additional cost or revenue associated with stopping the noise so these are the two possibilities here the latter case this would not actually occur with uh, and the business continuing operation with no exchange of money will that is something probable to happen right and if the business value if the market value produced by the activity that is making the noise exceeds the market value of the damage the noise causes to the neighbors then the efficient market outcome is that the business will continue making missions so we will uh, here we want to understand whether the market value of uh, one uh, kind of economic activity is above the market value of other kind of economic activity so what is what is greater than the other so this is what determines the efficient outcome in the economy the business in this case can continue to produce a noise and compensate the neighbors out of the revenue generated if the value of the business on the other hand 
the value of the business output for making missions is less than the cost imposed on the neighbors by noise then the efficient outcome is that the business will stop making missions and uh, the uh, neighbors would compensate the business for doing so now in the real world however the neighbors will not pay a business to stop making missions because the cost of doing cost for doing so would be higher than the value they place on the terms of noise now take uh, the case of another example uh, here uh, just consider that there is uh, there is a turbine working wind turbine working and as a working of the wind turbine there this also makes a lots of noise okay now uh, and here it, uh, it is efficient to let the turbine make noise if the value of the operating turbine is greater than the noise cost imposed on those who live near it on the other hand it is efficient to shut down the turbine plant if the value of the operating turbine is less than the noise cost imposed by it, uh, imposed on the nearby residents okay now since the potential rights and desires of the turbine company and the households are clearly in conflict right these are anyway in conflict no the turbine company want the turbine to operate in order to make the profit and also the household household doesn't uh, doesn't want the turbine to operate because they even um, if the turbine operate then the household might be able, might not be able to tolerate the noise it Uh, it it would be making so as as a result the interest of both the uh, both the company and the household would be in conflict and in this scenario it is possible that the two parties will end up to the court to figure out whose right take precedence in such a scenario the court will decide that the turbine company has the right to operate at an expense of the nearby household or the household have to right, have the right for quietness at the expense of the turbine companies this operation the the turbine company need profit as a result they will their um, their claim is that they have to, they need to continue uh, uh, continue operating the turbines and whereas the household uh, household claim is that they need some kind of quietness so as a result they will try to prevent the company from um, company from operating the turbine so these are these two are conflicting interest rights now if you look at the, if you apply the cost theorem into this context cost main thesis is that the main decision regarding the assignment of property rights is not bearing on whether the turbines continue to operate in the area as long as the parties can bargain with any cost now uh, we have to understand whether this cost theorem would be able to work in practical life in this scenario it is very much important to understand in the case of turbines example we can say that uh, it is efficient to have the turbines operating in the area uh, if that is the value to the company of operating turbines is greater than the cost imposed on the household then uh, then it is okay right uh, if you put it on the other way this means the turbine company will be willing to pay to the household more to stay in the business that the household will be willing to pay to the turbine company to shut down so in this case also there is no problem because that uh, there is no problem for the turbine company to operate because uh, the turbine company is able to compensate the households uh, uh, and the compensation given to the households by the turbine company would be greater than the expected compensation given by the household to the turbine company right so in this case uh, the benefit will be coming to the the compensation is something that is um, the compensation given by the company to the household would be Uh, something that is considered to be balancing uh, the externality created by the uh, turbine company now if the court decides that the household have the right to uh, quietness the turbine company will probably compensate the household in exchange for letting the turbines operate right because the turbines are worth more to the company than the quietness which is worth to the household Uh, so some offer uh, will be acceptable to both the parties and the turbine will company because they will they are compensating the households for making the noise on the other hand if the courts decide that the company has the right to operate the turbine the turbines will stay in business and no money will change hands so here uh, here lies a exact problem this is because uh, uh, households are in willing to pay enough to convince the turbine company to cease the operation in summary the assignment of rights in this example didn't affect the uh, outcome once the opportunity to bargain was introduced but the property rights did affect the transfers of money between the two parties this scenario is something considered to be uh, close to real, uh, uh, close to real life uh, 
because uh, in 2010 we could see that Keatonous um, uh, energy offered households near its servants in eastern Oregon dollar uh, 5000 each not to complain about the noise that the turbines generate. It's most likely that in this scenario, the value of the operating turbine was greater to the company than the value of coinness uh, was to the household. And it was probably easy for the company to proactively offer compensation to the household than it would have been to get the courts involved. Now, uh, it is very much important to ask the question, uh, having understood what this course theorem with the help of the examples and all, it is very much, so I think that you are now clear with the course theorem, how uh, course theorem works and all, it's very clear to you. Now, uh, having discussed that, now it is very much important to ask the question, uh, especially in a scenario that when we know that course theorem is, is something that could be applicable only in the case of uh, uh, no transaction cost, or in the case of perfect market, perfect competition, etc. Whether, whether this course theorem is something that is applicable in real life. This is a question that is worth to be answered. Now, in order to uh, apply Coase theorem, condition for efficient competitive markets around the disputed property must occur. That we have already discussed this. And if such a condition not happened, then an efficient outcome or an efficient solution is something that is very much unlikely. And we know that the assumptions of Coase theorem, that is zero transaction cost or bargaining cost, perfect competition, no market uh, power differences, efficient market for all later goods and production factors. So this, these are the some some of the assumptions that we uh, that we take into consideration while dealing with the Coase theorem, and we know that this is very much this is something that is uh, very much close to impossibility in especially in the real world is concerned, right? Yeah, information is not a perfect thing. Uh, uh, the different parties involved in a conflict uh, do not process uh, symmetric information, and also some, and they do not process perfect information. And market power is something that is uh, shared differently by different persons. And uh, and perfect competition is something that is considered to be, though it is ideal, ideal, it is not that uh, practical, especially in the real world is concerned. So in this scenario, because the condition necessary for Coase theorem uh, to apply the real world disputes of the distribution of property that virtually never occurred outside the idealist economic models, some questions its relevance to apply uh, to the arena of law and economics. Recognizing these real world difficulties with applying of Coase theorem, some economists they view this theorem not as a prescription for how disputes ought to be resolved. But this theorem is considered to be an explanation for why uh, many apparently inefficient outcomes to the economic dispute can be found can be found in the real world. Uh, so in practice, there are a number of reasons why Coase theorem cannot be applicable in the real world uh, uh, life. Uh, in some cases, the endowment effect could cause the valuation elicited in negotiation to depend on the initial allocation of property rights. Whereas in the other cases, negotiation may, may not be feasible either due to the number of parties involved in uh, social convention. For example, if there are two parties, then bargaining is something that is feasible or the, something that is possible because only two parties are involved and they will be able to negotiate and uh, they will able they will be able to settle the matter but if uh, consider a situation then where there are more than uh, more than uh, two more two more than two or three uh, parties then in this case it is very difficult to arrive at a negotiation or very difficult to arrive at a settlement and in this case it is very much important to note that we cannot assume that there is there will be zero transaction cost and also it is very much difficult to assume that there will be symmetric information and all so in this case uh, the cost here is something that is uh, close to impossibility so with that we end uh, today's video. I hope you understand Coase theorem. Uh, I uh, request you to uh, like, share and subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.